Chef O.D. for the Soul, a bite-sized reflection by the Feast Ortigas District Builders, happening every Monday to Saturday at 10 in the morning. Friends, every 7, 10 in the morning, we have Break Feast, every Monday to Saturday, as we lead you to a short exam for a strong jumpstart to win your day. As we cap off our night, we present to you Late Night Snack. Monday to Saturday, every 10 in the evening, as we lead you to another exam to end the day. Friends, Worship Night, every Wednesday and Friday at 7.30 in the evening, as we go deep for another praise and worship experience. As we come to you as one Feast Ortigas District family, we invite you to our Feast at Home. This is a collaboration of the builders all throughout the district. Schedules are available on your screen. See you there! As the situation pushes us to stay online, we present to you brand new online offerings. You may visit the following pages flashed on your screen. You can also watch us on YouTube at the World Wide Web. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button for you to be updated on our future contents. To find out more, visit us at www.feastortigasdistrict.com. All of these are possible with the Lord. Through our dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for blessing us with your love and support. Let us continue the cycle of generosity by giving your donations, tithes, and love offerings through PayMaya or by visiting our website at feastortigasdistrict.com slash give. Thank you so much for your support. sisters welcome to feast at home and as we begin to prepare our hearts to listen to the words of god let us remember our loving god who is all so powerful and has done great things in our lives remember to let god reign in your hearts and let god show you how powerful he is as we all sing you reign by feasts worship.
I am desperate for anything to ease the burden, for something new to give me anything that's certain. Longing for a change, looking for escape, searching for a reason not to stay the same. But in your hands I remain. I choose to heed your call. I leave it up to you. You who see my rise and fall. So cleanse me, disturb me, shake me to my core. Make me. Hi everybody and welcome to the feast, your, your happiest place on earth and this is your place of miracles. Alam mo, this week, excited na excited ako sabihin niyan yung this is your place of miracles. Kasi ang talk natin, ang welcome to our brand new series, ang title po is Miracles and More. Can you say this with me? Miracles and More. And you know... This is something that we need to talk about and it's something that we always say at the feast, no? Yung sinasabi natin palagi, this is your place of miracles. And why is this important? Kasi alam niyo po, kung hindi tayo naniniwala na ang feast is, place, is a place of miracles, paano tayo maging community? Paano tayo maging church, di ba? We are a church because God is here. God is present. If you're with somebody, pakisabi nga sa kanya, God is here! Amen. You know, here in the feast, we believe that it is a place of miracles. And we believe that miracles still happen every day. And we believe that the same Jesus who did miracles 2,000 years ago is still doing miracles in your life today. And I want that to sink in. Sink in natin, no? And you know, when you say miracles, alam mo, maraming klase ng miracles, eh, but I just want to share, no? Oh, I, 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 maybe it's not a miracle, it's more of a blessing, but Today, something amazing happened to me. Um, see, Father Nelson Osorio, who's uh, also a good friend, yung church nila allows 10% already na, ng occupancy ng simbahan. And nakapagmasa ko kaninang umaga, 6.30 in the morning. And you know what? Nakapag-communion ako for the first time since March. And... Grabe, no? You know, parang naiyak ako talaga, na, na-feel ko talaga yung presence ni Lord. And you know, sometimes, hindi natin natatake, hindi natin na-appreciate yung things na nandiyan, eh, yung mga miracles that are happening in your life. You don't really appreciate it. Why? Because they're just there. Pero minsan, kailangan mawala. Kailangan mag-struggle ka muna, no? Meron kang struggle. Meron ka muna paghahangad ng matagal. And, because of that, yung feeling ko kanina was extra special. And, you know, I, when, when you go back to, when we all go back to, to church and we have live mass again and the communion tayo ulit, siguro lahat tayo mas ma-appreciate natin yun. And anyway, if you're ready to receive God's word for you today, let's pray our favorite prayer in the feast in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everybody. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. You know, for the past weeks, we've been, we've, we've been uh, talking about the Sermon on the Mount. And kakatapos lang natin. We just finished talk 18 ng Sermon on the Mount. Uh, chapter 5 to 7 in Matthew. 
Eh ngayon, pag-uusapan naman natin yung mga miracles which happened on chapter 8 and 9. And the big message natin for today is this, make me clean. Pakisabi nga with me, make me clean. And let's le- read our verse for today. Let's read it together. It says, Large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. Suddenly, a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly, the leprosy disappeared. Then Jesus said to him, don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. Brothers and sisters, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your message for me today. I open, I ask that you open my heart. You open my mind to your message. And Lord, I want to tell you that I trust you. I trust in your character. I trust in your goodness. I trust in your love for me. Allow me to receive this every day and allow me to continue to trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Honor the word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Amen. You know, the message that for today is this. Are you ready? Life is unfair. <laughs> Life is unfair. So, yan ang pag-u- yung talk natin, divide natin into two parts. And the first part is this, you know. Yes, life is unfair, but God is still good. Pakisabi nga yan with me, God is still good. God is still good. Kasi minsan nakakalimutan natin is God, na God is good. Especially what? Pag nagkakaroon tayo ng mga struggles, pag nagkakaroon tayo ng mga problema, we ask, is God really good? And you know, to, to understand this, I want to share something with you. You know, I'm a father. Tatay ako, I have three beautiful girls. And I've been a father for 18 years. Panganay ko is 18 years old. And one of the most enjoyable things in life talaga, no? in my life, is being a dad. And one of the most difficult things that I've had to do in my life is also be a dad. And in, in particular, it's to allow my kids to struggle. To allow them to struggle, to have their own struggles, you know? Kasi minsan tayo bilang magulang, we, we have the temptation to save our kids. No? Parang gusto natin i-save sila sa mga problema nila. But kami, we learned early on that we, our kids need to struggle. Maliliit pa lang sila, no? Maliliit pa lang sila. Pinabayaan namin sila mag-aral on their own. Honestly, our kids study. Nag-aaral sila mag-isa. Hindi namin sila chinututor. Nagtumutulong lang kami pag meron silang project. Pag talaga, ay, and pag humingi sila ng tulong. But they were, they were like that even when they were small until gumraduate na si Sophia ng high school, ng senior high. And last year, Talagang yung aming, yung aming policy na yan was put to the test. Bakit? Kasi si Sophia, she was senior high and graduating, di ba? So she wanted to have good grades. So anong ginagawa niya? Talagang aral siya ng aral. Tapos gumagawa siya ng mga project niya. And sometimes, yung ibang group mates niya, hindi ginagawa ng mga maayos yung kailangan nilang gawin. So yung anak namin, nakikita ako tulog 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning, Five in the morning, papasok na eh. Diba? Walang, walang tulog. And tinatanong namin siya, what, what's happening? Sabi niya kasi gumagawa siya ng mga videos and she wanted the videos to be perfect. Siya yung nag-edit, ginagawa niya lahat. And makita mo, sobrang passionate siya about what she does. But I could see her, talagang kita mo yung eye bags niya. To. Sobrang, sobrang pagod na siya, sobrang stress na siya. And I could see the stress. Talagang nakikita ko, nagsastruggle siya with what she was doing. And you know, a part of me, yeah, it would have been very easy for me to just, you know, tatawag sa teacher nila at magsabi, bakit yung pinap- pinapayagan ng ganyan ang, ang ginagawa ng anak namin? Dapat balance yung trabaho. Dapat lahat ng groupmates gagawa ng trabaho. But 
you know what? Hindi namin ginawa yun. Ni-resist namin yun. And what did we do? We listened to her. Pinakinggan namin yung kanyang mga complaints. Pinakinggan namin yung kanyang mga struggle. And then encourage lang namin siya. Kaya mo yan. Sabi lang namin, kaya mo yan. Kailangan kayaanin mo yan. Because when you go to college, ganyan pa rin. Kailangan matibay ka. And you know what? I call this a miracle, no? a small miracle. Graduating siya, no? Nung mabas yung grades niya. Paglabas ng grades niya, yung standing niya, yung grades niya, parang gold eagle. Sa school nila, ang ibig sabihin nun, gold, parang gold medal, parang first honors. And para graduate siya, in short, na-accomplish niya yung goals niya, na maganda yung grades niya. And I could see it in her face, yung happiness niya, yung yung, anong tawag niyo, yung satisfaction na lahat ng ginawa niya yung paghihirap, lahat ng struggle niya nag-pay off. And when that happened, I was so happy na hindi ko pinakialaman siya nung nagsa-struggle siya. Why? Because kung tinulungan ko siya in that way, kung pinakialaman ko siya, if I had saved her from, from, from that, yung kanyang victory would not have been so sweet. Tama po ba? Diba? And sometimes, you know, yun yung realization ko, no? God as our Father, He lets us go through our struggles. I think, I think si Lord, ginagawa niya, pag pinapanood natin siya, pinapanood niya tayo mag-struggle, sinasabi niya, alam mo, nakita niya na yung future, sabi niya, alam mo kung alam mo lang, kung alam mo lang kung ano yung magiging resulta nito sa buhay mo, kung alam mo lang what victory you will achieve, what, 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 achievement you will have because of this struggle right now. Kung gano'n ka magiging kalakas, gano'n ka katibay, gano'n ka ka-successful dahil nagsa-struggle ka. Tama po ba? And it's the adversity, the adversity that comes into our lives that produce this. And, and sometimes, some of us have more adversity than others. Tama po ba? And I want to burst your bubble. And I, I want to say this, no? Life is not fair. Life is not fair. Minsan may mga tao talaga na parang grabe, mas madami talaga silang struggles. And you know what? The earlier na tanggapin natin to, the easier it is going to be for your life. But this is my message for you today. Even if life is not fair, God is still good. God is still good. Your God is so good. And sabi ko nga kanina, no, yung struggles mo, may purpose yan. He allows you to go through the struggles. Why? Because He sees the victory already. Diba? Siguro gusto niya makita yung mukha natin as we conquer our demons, as we conquer our struggles. No? Which brings me to the key passage we have today. And let's read this. You know, when Matthew said, sabi niya, no, large crowds followed Jesus as He came down the mountainside. Alam mo, gusto ko ito eh, sinabi na mountainside. Kasi di ba, dati, yung, yung, yung last uh, chapter natin, Sermon on the Mount, and now, he was already going down the mount, mountainside. So pinapakita o, oh, na nandun ako sa mountain, and explain ko sa inyo, through my words, ano ba ang kingdom ko? And now, I am going to show you kung ano yung kingdom ko, through my works. So sinasabi niya, watch me. Di ba? Sabi niya kanina, listen to me. Now, watch what I will do. And ano nangyari yun? And nagkataon, no? Actually, hindi nagkataon. Basta I knew, I know Jesus already knew this was gonna happen. The first person he met needed the miracle. Di ba? Suddenly, a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you're willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Alam mo, ulitin ko lang, clarify ko lang to. When the Bible says leprosy, hindi yan ibig sabihin na yung, yung clinical term na leprosy. Kasi ang leprosy, it's called Hansen's disease. Pero noong time na yon, anybody who had a skin problem, le- leprosy na yung tawag doon. And bakit importante yung word na suddenly? Kasi supposed to be, if you are a leper, you are unclean. Ibig sabihin, hindi ka dapat makaka-surprise ng tao. Dapat malayo ka pala, nag announce ka na. May bell ka, nag announce ka. Unclean, unclean. Para yung mga tao tumabi. Di ba? Kasi under the laws of Moses, kailangan niya mag-announce. Dahil what? Hindi siya pwedeng i-touch ng mga tao. And you know what? Magsa-sidetrack ako ng konti rito. Brothers and sisters, alam mo yung mga taong may covid Baka ganyan ang feeling nila para silang leper. You know? 
I hear sad stories, no? Ikaw na nga yung nagkasakit, ikaw na nga yung biktima. Di, di, di ba? Ikaw naman eh. Wala naman na kagusto, hindi mo naman sinadya mangyari yan. Yet people treat you like you're a leper. And that also happens to our frontliners. So brothers and sisters, ang invitation ko sa inyo, let's treat our frontliners well. They're, they're actually heroes, di ba? And bakit shocking yung kaninang kwento ko sa'yo, yung sinabi ko nga na unclean. Balikan ko lang, wrap up ko lang, patapos na ako sa part ko. Yung sinabing unclean, unclean, kaya nga eh, they were supposed to announce that they were unclean. But ito, biglang humarap kay Jesus and said, suddenly, and you want to know what happens next? You've probably heard the word holy before, or at least sang it in a church song once or twice. And for most people, this idea is really just connected to being a morally good person. So God is holy because he's morally perfect. Yeah, that is part of it. But in the Bible, the idea of holiness is even bigger and more rich. If you're impure, his presence is dangerous to you. And not because it's bad, but because it's so good. That intensity of God's holiness that's explored even more in the stories about Israel's temple, which was the main place where God's holy presence was located. And at the center of the temple was this room called the most holy place, this the hot spot of God's presence. And whether you're an Israelite living in the land around the temple or a priest working right in the temple, you're in proximity to God's holy presence, which is dangerous. Yeah, this is a problem. So how's it supposed to work? Well, in the Bible, the solution is that you need to become pure. So like being morally pure. Yeah, and that's easy enough to understand. But the Bible spends a lot of time talking about another kind of purity, being ritually pure, which is a state where you separate yourself from anything related to death, like touching things like diseased skin or dead bodies or even certain bodily fluids. All these make you impure. And becoming ritually impure isn't necessarily sinful. What's wrong is waltzing into God's presence when you're in an impure state. So later in the scriptures, we find this really interesting story by a prophet named Isaiah. And he has this crazy vision where he's in the temple and he's right in God's presence. He's totally terrified. Yeah, he knows the rules. He shouldn't even be in there. And he's worried about being destroyed. And then this crazy creature called a seraphim. Yeah, that is a crazy creature. <laughs> totally. So it flies over with a hot coal, and then it sears Isaiah's lips with the coal and says something really weird. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. So this burning coal somehow makes Isaiah pure. Yeah, it's remarkable because normally if you touch something impure, it transfers its impurity to you. But now here's this new idea where you have this coal, this very holy and pure object, and it touches Isaiah and it transfers its purity to him. Isaiah is not destroyed by God's holiness. He's transformed by it. I mean, the implications of this are just huge. So instead of becoming pure first and then going into the temple, here God's holiness comes out from the temple, making things pure and bringing them to life. What does it all mean? So we don't know until we meet this man, Jesus. And he claims that he's fulfilling all of these ancient visions, but in surprising new ways. So Jesus, he went around touching people who are impure, people with skin diseases, a, a woman with chronic bleeding or dead people. And when he touches them, their impurity should transfer over to Jesus. But instead, Jesus' purity transfers to them and actually heals their bodies. Jesus is like that holy coal in Isaiah's vision. Right. And Jesus claimed that he was the human embodiment of God's own holiness and that he and his followers were now God's temple so that through them, God's holy presence would go out into the world and bring life and healing and hope. Thank you, Brother Ben, for opening the message for today for our talk. And at the same time, thank you also for the video that you have seen. If you were paying attention, if you saw the video that summarizes our topic for today. So kung napanood nyo, nag-gets nyo yun, alam nyo na kung anong pag-uusapan namin today. So welcome to our new series, Miracles and More. In our talk one, the title is Make Me Clean, and this is part two. So I, and, and I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Brother Anthony Rodriguez. I'm the Feast Builder for the Feast Ortiga Sunday 430 Feast. So magandang magandang hapon 
sa inyong lahat. Magandang gabi, magandang umaga. Great day to everyone. Kung saan man kayo nanonood, joining us today and listening to the part two of our talk. So maraming maraming salamat sa inyo and thank you for joining us. So I want to start. Is it okay? Let's start now with the part two of our series of our new talk for today. Talk one, make me clean. And I like to start with with this verse. Yeah, I like to read it from Matthew chapter eight, verse one to two. Large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. Suddenly, a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, "If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean." Yeah, amen. Diba Matthew said this part na diba Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said. So the leper wasn't asking if Jesus could heal him. Kasi tinig ko alam naman niya, di ba? He could, he believed Jesus could do it. And paano natin malaman yun? Paano kung nasabi? Because unang-una, he called Jesus Lord. So kung alam mo, may respeto ka, alam mong kaya niyang gawin yun. And second, uh, it said in the previous verse that he knelt before him. Di ba? Lumuhod siya sa kanya. And you don't do those two things unless you know this person was powerful. Di ba, hindi ka naman luluhod or hindi mo tatawagin Lord kung di mo alam na powerful yung tao, na ta- yung tao na yan. Pero his question was, if you are willing, if you are willing. So he knew Jesus was powerful. Sobrang sure siya doon. Alam na alam niya yun that, that Jesus was powerful. But was he a good guy? I think that was what's running in the mind of the leper. Kaya natin yun, the leper was not asking about his capacity, but he was asking about his character. Yun. He was asking about Jesus' character. And brothers and sisters, kung mapapansin nyo, isn't this our problem too? Na pinagdadaanan din natin yan madalas na alam naman natin how powerful God is in our lives. And after all, if you look around you, siya may gawa ng lahat yan. He created the universe, everything is ginawa niya. But but the problem, siguro, misan tinatanong natin sa sarili natin, we're questioning the character ng Lord na, Lord, uh, bakit hindi mo maayos yung mga problema na pinagdadaanan namin ngayon? Especially with the pandemic, Lord, bakit ba nasasaktan pa rin ako? Di ba? Bakit ba hindi pa nasusolusyonan lahat tong pinagdadaanan natin na paghihira, pagdudus at tong pandemic na to, Bakit maraming may sakit? Bakit maraming nawawalan ng trabaho? Ang dami nating tanong. Di ba? I want us to to go back then. Think of Jesus' audience for a minute. When he was preaching this, they were the people who were oppressed. Sila'y masyado rin maraming pinagdadaanan sa buhay. Most of the Jews were poor and they were getting poorer under the crushing weight of the high Roman taxes. Diba sobrang laki ng taxes sa binibigay sa kanila na walang opportunity for them to grow financially dahil nakukuha din nila lahat eh. And when they could not pay, their lands were being confiscated and their children were sold as slaves. So walang naiiwan for them. So if God was really good, why, bakit di siya magpadala ng isang superman to save them? <laughs> isang ganun, no? Or si Captain America to send to them. Or yung buong Avengers, ipadala na niya, di ba? To rescue them from from this evil Roman Empire. Pwede naman gawin ni Lord yun, ni Jesus, ganun. Pero he did not do that simply because He wants us to learn from the things that we are going through. Ibig sabihin ba noon na God isn't good because hindi niya ginawa? Bakit hindi niya ginawa isang ganun lang? Okay na lahat? Brothers and sisters, hindi eh. It just means that his idea of good is very different than your idea of good. I repeat, his idea of good is very different than your idea of good. Baka hindi, hindi, hindi tayo makita eye to eye. Ano ba talaga yun? And during difficult times, God invites you to trust in His goodness. Diba? Jesus says, trust in my goodness. Uh, I know all you see is bad, but behind all that bad, something good is happening to you. Do you believe that? For I promise that all things will work for your good. That's from Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Diba? Lahat ng pinagdadaanan na natin, oftentimes at the end of all this difficulty, we realize na, Lord, kaya ko pala pinagdaanan yun because you're preparing me for something uh, big that is happening in my life. 
And even when things are bad, alam niyo ang sikreto dyan, declare it all the time. Declare it today if you haven't just declared and say, God is still good. Diba? No matter what I'm going through, God is still good. The mere fact that you're still alive, you're breathing, God is still good in your life. So brothers and sisters, the second part of, of our talk, our story is that I like to preach the message, you belong to God. Yan. You belong to God. I-claim niya sa sarili niya. We all belong to God. You know, brothers and sisters, just to share a personal story. I I love, I up to now, love ko pa, I love playing basketball. And and that was my dream when I was younger, which a few years ago lang. Yan. I I played basketball for our school. So kung yung mga kaedad ko alam niyan. So naglaro ko ng SVP, ng no medyo ano na guys, so, naglaro ko ng pasarel. So wala na ngayon yung mga liga na yan, obsolete na yata. Eh. And I was happy with uh, what I was doing. Sabi ko, Lord, ito yung buhay na gusto ko eh. Pero in I think it was in 1990 when when I gave my life to Jesus. I was 12 years old during that time when I attended my first youth camp sa Alpadi pa yon hindi po pa despite Alpadi po sa may sa may Antipolo and and when i attended that that camp all of a sudden i i felt that i belong to someone when when i was just playing basketball i was happy na parang lord ito yung gusto ko pero parang alam mo yon hindi ganoon sobrang saya pero when i attended the camp and i offered my life to god at a young age i felt that i belong to someone i belong to god and i i saw a different purpose in life. And I found out that this God was a father of a family. So I belong to his family too. And di ba sobrang sarap ng ganong feeling na alam mong accepted ka part of a family. And brothers and sisters, friends, I think we can all call, a, what do you call this term? Pwede mo pagsamasamayin lahat ng problema sa buhay na pinagdadaanan mo into one word. It's called separation. Yeah, and separation. That all the problems that we go through, pinagdadaanan natin yan because of separation. Because I believe that the greatest need of a human being is connection. Diba? Connection with God and others. And if you are not connected, there's a certain feeling na, Lord, parang, bakit ganito? Ba't ang daming problema? Ba't parang hindi ko maintindihan ng buhay? And it's because separation is there. And if you are connected, it's easier for you to see God's plan for you. Diba? In verse 2, sabi dun, the leper said, Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Bakit niya nasabi na, make me clean? Sobrang dumi ba niya? Was he, was he that dirty? Alam niyo, 2,000 years ago, wala pa namang concept ng bacteria, ng virus, ng germs. Kung mapapasin nyo, kahit nung, uh, kung mga batang 80s, 90s ka, di ba? maglalaro ka sa kalsada, magdumihan ka, lahat yan. Hindi ka takot eh. Wala, wala kang virus na kinakatakutan. Para kang superman. No? Lahat yan okay lang. Kahit yung lupa, kainin mo konti, okay pa rin. <laughs> Pinagda, doon tayo naglalaro sa lupa, di ba? Yung mga hole, yung shot. Oh, doon, kahit madumihan, okay lang. Kahit tumambay ka sa daan, walang problema. Eh. Pero during that time, they had a concept of being, unritual, uh, being ritually unclean. Yan yung concept nila. Because the Jews divided the entire world between clean and unclean. Kung mapanan yung video natin kanina, di ba yung explain doon? And that's the concept of that. Clean and unclean. Some food were clean, some food were not. And for them, beef was clean, pork was not. Di ba? Para sa atin, siguro yung tilapia, malinis. Pero yung mga squid, yung mga shrimp, o yung shells na bottom dwellers, yan yung madudumi. And they were not clean. And from from the book of Numbers, I'd like to read this passage. We can catch three things that can make people unclean. The Lord gave these instructions to Moses. Command the people of Israel to remove from the camp anyone who has a skin disease or a discharge or who has become ceremon- ceremonially unclean by touching a dead person. Yeah, and it's from the book of Numbers. I'll enumerate the three things that we mentioned. First one is skin disease. Uh, second one is discharge of sexual fluids. And the third one is touching a dead body. So pag nahawakan mo yan o meron ka niyan, you are considered unclean. Some people say na parang napaka-barbaric ba yung term or napaka-lupit. Bakit naman ganun? How can can such things that you're going to make someone unclean before God? And 
paano kung ang kaibigan mo ay eh, makeup artist sa puneraria, di never na siyang naging clean. Unclean na siya palagi. Eh, pero kung sikat naman yung kaibigan mo, no, dahil wala pang customer na nagre-reklamo, di okay na ba? <laughs> pero, pero yun ang ginagawa. He, she, she or he touches dead bodies all the time. Ibig sabihin ba nun, he, he or she will always be unclean before God, di ba? Or paano kung yung mga asawa natin, yung asawa siya, di ba? Kung may monthly period yan, does that mean that they are unclean to and can't worship God? Parang ang hirap, ano? Paano may paliwanag yun? But before I explain the Old Testament concept of clean and unclean, I need to first share to you a very important truth uh, on reading very foreign passages like this. Kasi medyo bago siya, di ba? Remember that when you read the Bible, you're reading these two machines that I'll explain to you. First one is that you're riding a jet plane to another country. Parang example yan. First, you're riding a jet plane to another country. When you go to Japan and you see them eat yung mga raw fish, ang sarap nun, di ba? Mga sushi, <laughs> every single day, does that mean they're barbaric? Kasi hindi yan nililuto, Mali, hindi malinis yun. Nililinis na, tapos hindi luto. Or maybe they're just different, di ba? Or when you go to Korea and see them eat rotten cabbages, ba? every day, do you say that they're barbaric? Hindi naman, di ba? They're just different. And you don't fly to France and complain na, bakit walang paksi yung nababoy dito? No? Bakit walang tuyo yung mga ganun? <laughs> or adobo or sinigang, di ba? You don't go to Italy and complain why their yung spaghetti nila ay hindi matamis na parang sa favorite natin mga fast food. <laughs> di ba? Yung mga or bakit walang hotdog? Hindi naman ganun. But, what's, but that's what we do when you read the Bible and expect it to re- we and expected to read it like a modern book. Mahihirapan tayo. So we need to to see that part. Not only that you're riding a jet plane, but we're also riding a time machine. When we when you read the Bible, we're traveling back in time, not 10 years ago or 50 or 100 years ago, but as far back as 3,000 years ago. So instead of saying that's barbaric or shall be a good, parang isang turista when you go to a country, di ba? you enter their amazing world, and one of the things about, one of the things about their world it's it is a bigger concept of clean and unclean. Yeah, and I'll try to explain that to you. What does ritually unclean mean? Ano yung ibig sabihin nun? Um in the Bible when you read it, pag sinabing unclean, uh, parang ang unang dating sa atin, ito ba yung tao na sinner, ito yung makasalanan. Pero when you go through it and read it again and understand it, hindi hindi pala yun ang concept niya. It becomes a sin only if the unclean person goes to the temple. Just like in our story kanina, before the start of my of my part. But being unclean was just part of the cycle of being human. Diba? For example, a Jew who has to bury, uh, let's say his grandfather would be ritually unclean for seven days because he touched a dead body. And But burying his grandfather doesn't make him bad. Diba? A man having a wet dream will make him unclean for seven days too. That's part of the ritual. Pero a woman having menstrual period will also make her unclean. But doesn't that doesn't mean they're sinners. I'm sure you're asking, Brother Anthony, bakit ganyan? Why would this fluid make someone ceremonially unclean? Yung mga lahat ng sinabi mo. Because in their paradigm, the way they look at things before is that these things, yung blood, yung sexual fluids, and cadaver, they were intimately connected to life and death. Diba? They were connected to life and death. And touching them would make them unclean because God is the source of life and you can't approach Him with these symbols. Basically, yun yung tinuturo sa atin ng being ritually clean. And you just want, they, they, they want to purify ourselves when we come before God's presence. But this kind of thinking is rooted in just one idea. Uh, later on, um, our brother will continue that. So, brothers and sisters, my prayer for you today is that from from what I shared, we really see and understand ano yung clean, ano yung unclean. And brothers and sisters, to continue and end our talk, let us welcome Brother Jay. Thank you, Brother Anthony. Hello, brothers and sisters. Brother Jay here. Would you really want to understand why the Jews were so engrossed with being clean. <laughs> Ewan ko sa inyo, brothers and sisters, may kakilala ba kayong OC? Yan. Sa mga hindi nakakaalam ng OC, di ba? Parang obsessive-compulsive. But it's, it's uh, technically, 
all right? It is a neurotic disorder. But when you use it, okay, colloquially, okay, in, in general, it's basically people who are very, very, what, strict with, what, being clean, diba? Or being very exact for that moment. Now, of course, with this pandemic, I think many of us became OC in terms of cleanliness, diba? Okay? But I tell you, yung mga Jews, ay nako, next level sila. Ibang level yung kanilang pagka OC when it comes to what we call ritual cleanliness. Ah, Brother Jay, ano yung ritual cleanliness? Well, we will understand it as we go on. Friends, all of this, I am um, engrossed thinking and feeling about being clean. All roots from their belief that God is holy. God is holy. Yeah. If God is holy, then the thing here is this. If God lived in Israel, then Israel must be holy also. Diba? Because if God lived in Israel, then he should be holy also. Now, being ceremonially clean was a symbol of their being set apart for God. Yung pagka-clean nila niyan. So, you need to be ritually clean because that would be a constant symbolic reminder that they belonged to God. All right? So friends, understand this. Their belonging to God was very much equated also for them being clean ritually, ceremonially. ceremonially. And so friends, it was so important for them to be clean. It also would say to them, we're still special. We are set apart. Now, how else can we understand this? Let's look into first their whole idea that God is holy and that God is set apart. Kitang kita yan dun sa temple nila. Don't you know that their understanding is that God Himself lived in the temple, but not the whole of the temple, but a particular part of the temple. Even what, what is that? That's the 20 square meter room known as the Holy of Holies. Oh, diba? Ganyan talaga yung pangalan, Holy of Holies. Kasi nga, dun talaga si Lord. At walang pwedeng pumasok dyan. Wala isa lang. Ano? Sino yan? Yung high priest. Tapos, minsan lang sa isang taon known as the Day of Atonement. Ganun ka-separate si God. That's how God is other. That's how God is different. Okay? Nothing unclean can go near the room or inside the room. But you know, here's one thing interesting. One, da- one day, one day, one, uh, one person, no, an unclean person did go in. And this is the prophet Isaiah. Have you heard of Isaiah? Now, Isaiah came, had a out, uh, out of this world experience no? when he entered the Holy of Holies. He, he understood that he found himself transported in God's presence. And you know, if you are in God's presence, tanong ko lang sa inyo, gusto niyo ba yon? Gusto niyo ba yung you're in God's presence? Siguro gusto niyo, no? Ako rin, siguro, siguro. If I'm in God's presence, wow, ang saya-saya. Pero ano niyo, para sa mga Hudyo, that would be horrific. That would be horrific, okay? Kasi nga, iba yung tingin nila kay God. God is so different that they're not supposed to be even in His presence. To illustrate what I mean, let's all read Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5 to 7. It says, Then I said, It's all over. I'm doomed. For I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord of Heaven's armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with it and said, See, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed, and your sins are forgiven. Oh my gosh. Sino ito? Ito si Isaiah. So, gulat na gulat siya, takot na takot siya, hirap na hirap siya, sabi niya, oh my God, nakita ko si Lord. Pero ano nangyari? Yung coal na dala-dala nung seraphim, seraphim is a kind of angel, alright, okay, with six wings, nung dinagay yung coal sa lips niya, he became clean. Grabe. Nang wala yung pagka-uncleanliness ni Isaiah. Now friends, understand, this is exactly what Jesus did when he went to the leper. Remember the story? Let's go back to Matthew chapter 8, verse 3. Let's read it. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. Oh my gosh. Friends, understand this. Jesus touched the leper and all of the people 
Nako, nagulat sa ng lahat. Siguro jaw-dropping moment yun sa kanila. Kasi bakit? Bawal, bawal hawakan ang leopard. Kasi pag hinawakan mo siya, unclean siya eh. Magiging unclean ka rin. For you to understand, I have here with me two glasses of water. So I have two glasses of water. As you see, it has clear water, okay? But, okay, if let's say, you are clean and someone else is unclean as symbolized by this, okay? Ito yung effect. Pag meron kang uncleanliness, okay, at napunta sa clean, ano nangyayari? Yung unclean nagiging, yung clean rather, the clean becomes unclean. No? The clean becomes unclean. Parang mas malakas yung unclean. Naintindihan nyo? But, brothers and sisters, with a very big but, okay, Jesus, when he touched the leper, hindi siya yung naging unclean. Yung leper ang naging clean. The opposite happened. Do you get me? And this is also what happened to, what? Isaiah. The burning coal clean, clean, cleaned him. Alright? His, um, uh, the, the cleanliness of Jesus overpowered the uncleanliness of the leper and the leper was healed. Now, understand this. Pharisees, all the Jews were avoiding tax collectors, were avoiding prostitutes, and of course, were avoiding lepers. Why? Because they were afraid to be unclean. Now, understand this, that um, Jesus was doing the opposite. He was not avoiding these sinners. He was staying with them. He was eating with them, considering them what? Family. And therefore, he made themselves clean. So, paano yun, Brother Jay? Ito, let me illustrate using the same glass. So, di ba? Ito yung unang clean, pero dahil nilagyan po ng toyo, <laughs> okay, it became unclean. But what Jesus did was this. He being full of cleanliness, okay, would go to the sinners. And as he spends time with the sinners, all right, spends time with the sinners, what happens, all right? Yeah, no? It, okay, you will, you will see, you will see. Unti-unti, ano, unti-unti, magbabago yan. So, if I continue, please bear with me, all right? If I continue, and I'm not changing my, I'm not changing my, uh, my glasses, okay, just to prevent, yes, here. I continued on what? On pouring the water, dear friends, all right? And you will notice that as I pour out the water, all of these will now what? Bear with the sound, yeah, no? And when you're cleansing, no, may mga, yan, at least alam yung totoo to. <laughs> So, Jesus spending his time with the people, what happened? They became clean. Alright? Became clean, friends. Brothers and sisters, this is what Jesus does to us. When he comes to us, he cleans us. Now, Jesus, when he went to the leper, can he clean him without touching him? I believe so. But he preferred to touch him physically. Do you get me? Brothers and sisters, Jesus is the word of God. He created the heavens and the earth. He can just say, be healed and you'll be okay. But why did he touch the leper? Several reasons. First, it is this. Touch is an expression of love. Touch is an expression of love. Tama? Friends, sino dito? You are waiting for the time that this COVID problem will go so that we can hug each other. That so that we can go out and see the people that we love and hug them. Yes? Yes? Oh my gosh. All right? You can just imagine the feeling of this leper. Kawawa naman itong leper na to. Diba? All right? Um, but now, Jesus is there. He touched him. That could have been a wonderful touch. It could really change this leper's life just because someone else touched him. The second reason is this. Touch is connection. All right? Touch is connection. Brothers and sisters, I believe the greatest sickness is not uh, sickness of human beings, all right? The sickness of human beings is not what cancer or heart disease or leprosy. The greatest sickness of, of human beings is separation. Because if we're separated from God, oh my gosh, we won't even have life. If we're separated from other people, we get sick. As shown in this pandemic, right? We are so separated from one another and that may not problema affecting our emotions, our mind, and thus also affecting our body. But friends, when Jesus touched the leper, he was healed. Also, if you allow Jesus to touch you, you allow Jesus to enter your life, then your separation will be healed. 
we will now have permanent connection with God because Jesus is the one that connects us with God. Friends, I don't know with you, but have you met a, a, a certain people who, who lack their connection with God? They feel like a leper. They will say, I, I cannot go to God because I'm so dirty, I'm so un unworthy, and dami kong kasalanan, nakakahiya, nakakahiya. Siguro si God ang titingin niya sa akin, ang pagtingin niya sa akin, nako, uh, mandidiri siya sa akin, kasi ang dami na nung beses na nagkasala. Friends, I don't know with you, if you know persons like that, or maybe even you, you'd think that of yourself. Friends, can I preach to you? Can I share to you this truth? It is this. Jesus, wants to touch you today. Jesus, the holiest of holies, the Lord, the Redeemer, the Savior, He wants to touch you today. I believe nothing is by chance, friends, but that today as you are watching now, feast at home, in whatever state you are in, whatever you're feeling right now, whatever you think you are right now, God wants to touch you today. He wants to bless you. He wants to know and tell you, you to know and tell you, you're mine. You now belong to me. He wants to touch you just like as he, as he touched the leper, brothers and sisters. Just like the burning coal touched the lips of, 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 uh, of Isaiah, brothers and sisters. The Lord wants to burn whatever is evil in you, whatever wants to be burned out of you. He wants to do that now. Let him touch you today, brothers and sisters. Open your heart. Let Anything that's still dragging you down, anything that's still preventing you from going to the Lord, let it go already and let Him touch you. Let me end this, friends, by reading the last part of our miracle story. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 8, verse 3 to 4. It says this, And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Then Jesus said to him, Don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. Amen. Brothers and sisters, what was Jesus saying? The leper could not go to the temple simply because he had leprosy. And that leprosy told him and told everybody that he did not belong to God. But now, since the leprosy is gone, he can go. He can go to the temple. He can now worship. And the most important thing, he's not separate anymore. He belongs to God. Friends, today, God wants to make you clean also. He wants to touch you. Do receive his touch today. Listen to Jesus when he says to you today, my son, my daughter, my child, you're mine. You belong to me. Amen. Brothers and sisters, come to the Lord now. In whatever you are uh, in now, whatever you're feeling, whatever you are thinking of yourself right now, God will see past your sins, will see past your evil, will see past your uncleanliness because He is the clean one. He is the holy one. And when He touches you, you will be clean. You will be holy. You will be a new creation. Let's come before God. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, Lord God, we come to you, Lord. You are good. We see your goodness, Lord God, even today, because we come to you as we are, and we know that you can make us clean. Oh, Lord, touch us today, oh God. Right now, may we feel your embrace. Brothers and sisters, may I invite you now to just put your arms around yourself, and just come to God and feel His embrace right here, right now. Allow the Spirit to embrace you. Allow Jesus to embrace you. And with that embrace, let go of whatever is holding you back, whatever separateness that you think of, whatever sin, whatever guilt. Know that the Lord is here for you. He is healing you. He is loving you. Let his light and love overcome your darkness and sin. You do not belong to the world anymore. Not anymore to the enemy. Not anymore to sin. You belong to God. Oh, Father, we receive your embrace right now. We surrender, Lord God. May your will be done in our lives. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. That in the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us come.
to worship. Brothers and sisters, join us as we worship to respond to God's powerful message, a message of goodness and hope that amidst all our struggles and difficulties and all the crosses that we have to bear, we have a God in whom we can trust, a God in whom we can lean on. So let's sing. God, if you're Praise God. Thank you to our worship team for leading us into the presence of the Lord. And true enough, when we're in God's presence, we are made clean. Amen? Amen. Let's just cooperate with God's grace. Let's follow the Spirit. And guess what? He is stronger. He is greater. He is bigger, better than all our sins, than all of our darkness. His light will dispel all our darkness. Amen. Amen. Were you blessed today, brothers and sisters? Thank you so much for joining us. We'd like to thank you, not just for being here, but also for supporting us with your prayers. And of course, for all of those who have been supporting us with your contributions and your giving. Please do continue the cycle of abundance and of giving and of love as we continue also this ministry for the Lord for God's people. Amen. Friends, we are so blessed that you are here. We hope that you join us once again next week. 
and do remember that we all belong to God. You belong to God, friends. And thus, we, can, we are all made clean. We are all made new. You can just imagine how life can change if now has, God has given us our being holy. God is giving us a new life. Amen? To see you next week. I'll see you next week. God bless you.